Hi people, how are you? Uh, today I'm bringing this book by Andrea Stewart, The Gods Below. I have to say that I did love her previous trilogy, so I was awaiting her new book, her new trilogy. And yeah, it's an amazing read. I did love it. Um, just so many things that I love about this book. It's like, imagine that we are in the future and we have managed to destroy Heart. It's not so perfect, is it, with climate change and with all the abuse we are inflicting upon the planet and the resources and the animals and things like that. But imagine it like with magic and in a high fantasy setting. Uh, Andrea Stewart has this ability of creating these amazing world buildings. And this one, I did love the world building that she did in, the, in her first trilogy. And this one is amazing. We have this kind of future world where people are surviving, so to speak, because um, there's been like different generations and one of them used magic. There were these magic creatures called the Numinar. They have magic abilities, magic powers, magic per se. And humanity used and abused that magic, began hunting these people. If I understood that correctly, because now that I'm explaining it, I'm not sure that I did, but I think I did. Yay, my review! <laughs> okay, so those uh, people were hunted to extinction, and magic uh, was um, used and, you know, destroyed, and then suddenly humanity, the world began to, you know, to destroy itself, and the different places we are going to be finding in this book, here's a map that I want to show you at the very beginning of the book, all those places that we are going to be finding in our adventure are going to be like shadows of what they used to be. But in this ma in this world where you already have magic, you have these magical creatures, you already have gods. And gods used to hold the hair freely. And now we have a god called Kuen. And it seems like some kind of deal was, was struck with him. And he decided to help humanity. So he was going to make this thing where... He was going to kind of renew uh, different parts of the land so to get them, you know, lush, lush and green and able to sustain life again. So that's what he claims. But the thing is that when that happens, um, there's something else that happens too. And it's the creation of the altered. Altered are people who have undergone this change in which they have transformed into this kind of monstrous animals, kind of like you have reptiles, you have like hornet creatures, you have different kinds of things. And that's the best thing that can happen to you because if you are not transformed into one of the alterate, you are obliterated. So the price humanity is paying, it's being altered into this kind of creatures of being completely obliterated. So families are being separated, like really half the families are being killed and all of this. So at the very beginning of our book, we have these two sisters, Hakara and Raisha, and they are running from this impending transformation, but only one of them managed to escape, unscathed, and the other one is altered. So uh, they're going to be falling into different sides of the equation, and that's all I'm going to say because it's not that one gets transformed and the other one doesn't. It's just that one runs away, leaving the other behind. Not exactly, but, you know, um, depends on the perspective of which sister you're talking about. But it's also the thing that they're going to be traveling different paths. It's going to be 10 years from the moment in which it happened to where the story is actually happening now. So there's going to be lots of things changing between them. And they're going to be, as I was saying, in the opposite side of the equation. Also, we are going to be following other characters who are amazing. We're going to be following a character called Mool. Mool, it's going where no man has ever gone. <laughs> no, no, sincerely, truly. Do um, you remember when I say that, that God Kewen was uh, struck this kind of compromise in which he will renew the world? He did struck that with a human. And Mool is going to follow the steps of this human because he wants to save someone who's dying. So he is like quite, he wants to save her at any price. So he's been studying the journey that this person did because he believes that if he's able to recreate this journey, he will be given the chance to save that person that he loves. And I think it's amazing everything that happens around this part of the story. I do love this unwavering faith that he has that he is going to be able to save the other person. 
I love that illnesses, terminal illnesses, are uh, portrayed with respect, that uh, the character who's dying um, can choose to let go if she wants. Uh, it's, there is some resistance by Maul because he's not ready to say goodbye, but, you know. And I do love the people who are going to accompany them and how they are going to accept or not accept. Uh, the things that they are going to be discovering. And I'm not saying anything more about this journey. And then there's Shewan. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And this for me was an amazing character. I thought that the sisters were going to be my favorite characters. And then she appeared and I love her. Um, she comes from a clan that has been diminished. Uh, because her father was accused of doing something, of embellishing funds, and he was killed. So she is determined, determined to prove that he is innocent. But he ends up striking a deal and has to offer something in return with one of the oop, 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 oop persons in the hierarchy of power. So I love that she has all these expectations put on, on her. Her family, her clan, it's pushing her because she has to help them. She has to be brave enough. She has to be strong enough. She has to fit into this shape that they have created for her in which she has to do all those things that they don't seem able or willing to do. So she is in that place in which she believes that she's like the last hope of her family. So everything that she does, it's like... Uh, she is forgetting who she is in herself in order to fulfill this kind of role that her mom and that her clan are putting on her. And I love to have this character. I love to have this kind of representation when you have a family that are trying to mold you into something that you are not. And I love when characters make this journey of self-discovery and they decide... It ends here. I am my own persona. I don't know if she's going to discover that. You have to read the book to find out. And also, I was quite surprised to find out her love interest and the relationship. And it's, yeah, I'm rooting for them. And yeah, there are lots of characters that are going to surprise you. Because I'm not saying anything. I'm going to keep it as spoiler free as I can. But that ending. I wasn't expecting that ending. <laughs> no fucking way. And when you read that and in this last Two pages, you understand, like, everything. It's like, now I get this character. Now I get where he's coming from. And now I get why he's feeling the way that he is feeling. I mean, it's amazing. Hats off. It's amazing. Yeah, I do love this book. I do love to have this fantasy setting. I, I love this amazing world building. As I say, everything makes sense. Everything is going to be explained to you. I love that we have all these amazing characters. Uh, I love that we have these two sisters that have been separated. And, you know, one of them tries to wait for the other to come back. And the other one is trying to come back when life happens. And I love all the struggles that they go through and where they end up in the equation and the reasons why. I do love Mal and this idea of having to save uh, the person that, that you love. And this idea, this, he's a genius and he has like a very low mind and he has to be doing things and he's an amazing character. And I love Shiwan, as I say, I love that she's inspired, I love that she's a person that wears so many masks that when she began removing them, it's like who I am beneath and I am this persona. Do I like myself? Do I don't like myself? And yeah, I love everything. I love the God's story. I love the Google building. I love the actual moment. I love when the barrier went up and everyone, you know, changed and I love everything. So yeah, I cannot wait to read the second one. So if you like fantasy, if you like to be amazed, surprised by something you have never read before, because I think that it's completely unique. It's amazing. It tells about a world that has been destroyed and rebuilding it and what happens to the people who have abused power and how the people who are high, high, high in power I always cover and the ones who are paying the price are the lower castes probably. But in this case, it's like everyone is going to die if you don't go through the alteration. You're going to be obliterated. So it's like you have this like this thing breathing here on, on your head. And I love the story and more than anything, I do love the characters and I do love their stories, their conundrums, their fears, their hopes. So yeah, I'm shutting up now. Go grab this book because you are going to love it. So thank you for watching. Bye.